Cable dimensioning in the tier selection tool. The Load Feeder Configurator Plus in the tier selection tool calculates the cable cross sections inside and outside the cabinet for load feeders. You can see here in the overview that for each load feeder there is a value for the conductors and cables of the main circuit both inside and outside the control cabinet. These are issued to you at the end of your dimensioning for each individual feeder and comply with the requirements of IEC 60204-1. In the following, I will show you how you can achieve this result. First, you create a new feeder and start dimensioning it by clicking on electrical load. There you first select the motor power, in our case for a kilowatt. Here the usual rated current for a 4 kilowatt motor operated at 400 volts is automatically preset. At this point the expected operational current should be entered as it is shown on the motor's nameplate. Farther below you will find the input options regarding the cable length. The cable length and the cable impedance have a significant influence on any occurring short circuit current and voltage drop. In the next step, you select the cable characteristics outside the control cabinet. These include the ambient temperature of the electrical equipment of the machine or plant, also the number of symmetrically loaded three-phase circuits or the number of cables because parallel cables heat each other up and ultimately reduce the current carrying capacity, the installation method of the cable outside the control cabinet and thus the laying method in the hall, additionally the wire types, and finally you define a minimum cable cross-section to comply with possible specifications for the minimum cross-section. Clicking on switchgear first takes you to the selection parameters that relate to the switchgear itself. Farther down you will then reach the cable characteristics inside the control cabinet, namely the prevailing temperature in the control cabinet. Then again the number of loaded circuits and cables in the control cabinet. This can of course be different from the number of cables outside the control cabinet because lines or cables are usually laid differently in the cabinet or in the machine with regard to their laying method or assembly. You can also select the laying method, for instance B1, which is single wire laying in a cable duct because this is often used in the control cabinet. And finally, you can also select the wire type. Just click on Calculate and the Load Feeder Configurator will then determine both the components and the minimum cable cross-section for you. In the application example shown here, a minimum cable cross-section of 2.5 square millimeters is certainly practical for the 4 kilowatt motor and the distance of 25 meters. The cables have now been configured by the load feeder configurator in accordance with the standards with consideration of the normal motor operation, the short circuit current of the motor, the laying method, the ambient conditions, the temperature and the number of loaded circuits. 
All of these aspects are taken into account in the dimensioning of the cable so that in the end you get reliable and verifiable values for the machine documentation. Enjoy the cable dimensioning in the TIA selection tool. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.